Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are, some people are tuning in from Europe. So I think that's good evening, right? Uh, let's see. I am going to figure out what else I need to do to be able to. I'm going to stop share, actually. There. Perfect. And I'm going to pin myself. So you can see me a little bit better. And let me try it again to go live on Facebook because I think it's good to for people to have an access to out of the coming day two, um, the recording right away, right? So uh, while I work on taking this to the Facebook group, uh, I love how Julia, you're already talking about where you're from. You can Type on the chat, where are you joining? Um, it's always good to remind everybody else. And I, I'm kind of surprised and impressed that Zoom is becoming like a social media where you can react and have a little bit of comment and deeper chat one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, I think everybody, everything is going to that direction today. Um, but if you could share that, and also I would love for everybody to share uh, where, what, what's your number one takeaway that you had from yesterday? What is the number one takeaway that you had from yesterday? You might have had many, but if I ask you this question, what would come up? What's on your mind? What is standing out for you? And I think for me asking those questions and for you to sort of go back to your data uh, memory right from yesterday and i think that the beauty of this work is that we are talking about ourselves we are talking about life we're talking about uh, how we live a quality life and you know it's interesting because quality of life depends on the value um, that you have and there are a lot of people in the world who are seeking different things, right? Uh, there are people who are seeking wealth. There are people who are seeking health. There are pe people who are seeking love. There are people who are seeking all of the above. But I think what we are doing is a foundation of all where I, I feel like no matter how much people have all of the above that I mentioned, if you're not fully living from the place of who you are, there's something that you would feel missing deep inside. And when I say who you are, you're, I'm not talking about how you see you, what you think about you from your past, present memory, but it's more around the fundamental knowing. This is where uh, you know the language gets a little tricky and limited because the moment we start using language and when I use language and share any information to everybody, that becomes a concept, an idea. And then we are not a concept, nor idea. Yeah, we are not a concept, an idea. Um, we, we might wanna, if you're newer to this energy, we might wanna, you might wanna sort of contemplate a little bit, right? Like. If we are not a concept or an idea, who are we, right? So who we are is not really describable as a language because language is something that we created after the, um, you know, the, the birth or the evolution of the essence of who we are, right? Um, it's the other way around, right? Like for instance, when you look at babies, we don't see them speaking. They don't understand the language just yet, uh, but they have this life-giving energy. Uh, what I call energetics, right? So that energetics is this sort of cellular vibration um, that, that informs us that we are alive, the sentient beings, right? So that is life and that is who we are. And then all the ideas and conception of ourselves, who we think we are, how we feel about you, are those information that we constructed and created through our conditioning, right? So this three-day training, uh, today is the number two, day two, which is the um, your vibration, mastering your vibrational reality. But this is an out-of-becoming training, everybody, yeah? 
art of becoming training means that like who we become is up to us. Um, I don't want everybody to feel like, okay, who do I need to become based on what the world says about things? That's what we want to sort of uh, remove ourselves away from. Because I think uh, most of the time, we tend to do things the other way around. We tend to do things the other way around, right? We see what's out there, and then we kind of try to fit into the box that is existing. But what if, if uh, the box is a mental construct, collective mental construct, and you can create your own box? Uh, I don't like that. I don't think I have said this in this uh, training, but I said this in somewhere in last week or uh, two weeks ago, call that I had. And because of the train calls, um, I often don't remember which call I mentioned what, right? Um, but you might have seen on Google search where the teacher is telling all the animals to climb the tree. Yeah, all the animals are the students and the students are fish, the students are turtle, the students are monkey, the students are elephant. And then the teacher tells all those animals, okay, your test today is to climb a tree, right? So that's what's happening, right? In the world, right? Uh, it's not limited to school, but it's almost like that analogy of the teacher telling all the different unique expressive animals that has talent and the capacity to expand, to ask to do something that is based on what the teacher believes is what the collective humanity believes what it is or what it should be. And we are being asked to become somebody. Does that make sense? So I think I'm asking and I'm inviting everybody to remove all those invisible agreement, noticing what's there. Sometimes the invisible agreement in the social norm is very in our blind spot. You almost assume that life is how it is based on that. But what if it doesn't need to be that way? What if, if we truly begin believing and entering into the energy of wholeness, like I talked about yesterday, which I'm going to be going back to explain a little bit. What if, if we go back there and then start from that place, then if we start from that place and an infinite possibilities arises, and the only reason that the possibility is being diminished is because we're starting at the wrong place, which is living from the outside in, getting the information and information based on the belief in the collective, sort of invading our freedom. Yeah, the invisible norm in the society and in the world might be bending us from becoming who we can possibly become. And we want to sort of inquire that within and start from within, right? So uh, a little bit later, I'm going to talk more about desire, but that's where we want to begin. What is your desire? Okay, um, I see a lot of people are using the chat box, which is fantastic. Um, I think the difference between joining Zoom like this versus <laughs> you know watching the Facebook group, uh, live is that you have this intention of engaging a little bit. And when you enter into the room with the intention of engaging, you will receive back, right? That's giving and receiving. So uh, as much as you proactively participating in this conversation, uh, you will get the most out of it. So I would encourage that. Uh, what would be the number one thing? If you had a chance to, you know, um, a lot of people for here, I think I saw you yesterday. Uh, but some people might have catched uh, the recording. What was what would you say the number one thing that stood out for you? Yeah, without writing ten paragraph in the chat box, <laughs> like what would be like a one word or one sentence that you could sort of share with us that stood out for you?
and I'm just gonna meditate and wait for everybody to start saying something. Oh, interesting, Julia, you're saying that because like when I do this kind of training, I sit down in a piece of, in front of paper, like this piece of paper, and you don't need to be able to read it because this is my handwriting. This is my art. This is my art of becoming the next 90 minutes. <laughs> and then begin to start contemplating, right? Like reflecting what I shared yesterday and then sort of the agenda of today. And then often I don't go by the agenda, right? It's kind of comes up, but but I have the intention of delivering agenda, so I don't go too off track. But something that came up in uh, for me, Julia, also is the meaning. I'm gonna talk about meaning a little bit because a lot of people have this challenging time accepting or facing the contrast in the 3D world. And I mean, this is negative, right? How do I do with that, right? That they, they kind of get stuck there. Uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit about how to face that from the uh, place of perspective of uh, the soul, the spiritual perspective. Oh, Sharon still have to watch it. Yes, you have until uh, April 5th, which is next week, Wednesday. Oh, Nick is going to watch the replay. Monday says we're all one. Yes, we are. Oh, Kara, did you watch the replay? Contrast, not to see as negative situation. Yeah, the negativity is a perception, right? And the meaning that you're attaching. Yeah, wholeness, Jessica. I mean, that's what it is though. Like anything that's standing out for you, like can you see yourself as that, as an identity? That's what we're gonna practice. Everything that's standing out for you, can you see that as your identity? Uh, I see your hands up, Stephanie. I'm not going to have anybody unmute today. Uh, day one, day two is a chat box day. And day three is where we uh, go to Q&A because I have things that I want to deliver. And I don't want this to be a discussion place, day two. Uh, wholeness is good. That is perfect. Uh, Isan, you, I think you are not too far from me. Soul's guidance to hear and know your purpose when your mind's unclouded. You know, the, the purpose is something that a lot of people tend to try to find in the outside. But something that I say often is that purpose is not something that you need to find. It's something that you are on it already. If you came on this earth plane, you were on purpose and with purpose. And then what people are most of the time searching is the vehicle in which they can express through who they are, through their unique gift, right? So the vehicle, like, I feel like if you are, you know, if your main role is a mother, you know, often I hear mother is a full time. I don't want to say job. Yeah. Mother is must be a calling. My mother often says that you know, she's, she's so glad that she became a mother, right? And that's something that mothers feel called to uh, become, right? And I think any calling, right? Sometimes people talk about, okay, job, and job, the next level of meaningful service is job becoming a career, right? Career has this little progression and the growth through it, right? Jobs tends to be a little bit more of a task oriented, right? Transactional. But when it becomes career, the meaning gets infused, right? And once people go through this career uh, mentality, the next level, I think, is to sort of connect with their calling, right? Sometimes people use the term passion, other time people use the term purpose, right? Aligning with a purpose. But all of those are service. And I think if you are doing something to sort of serve the world through what you feel that it's a calling, you are on the rail and the vehicle that allows you to express yourself freely 
versus job or even career. Because, because career sometimes uh, tends to have a little bit of path that's given, right? It's a little bit outside in still, but calling feels like, okay, you might be given some opportunity, but calling seems like you are kind of coming from the inside and expressing outwards, yeah. So because, you know, I have the sole purpose group and a lot of the things that I do is related to our internal nature. People, people come to me asking about, you know, I, I feel a sense of emptiness, something is missing. Oh, this is the number one term that I hear often. I feel like there's more to life, but I don't know what that is. I feel like there's more to life is this internal knowing of the soul, turning into the feeling and having the gap between what you're experiencing in life and what you feel to be true. What you feel to be true. I think truth for each one of us is something that we internally know and knowing comes as a sensation of feeling inside not like comprehending intellectually kind of way right so yeah definitely soul's guidance is uh what we are here to um explore okay that is fantastic so what i wanted to do today is a day two and I'm going to recap a little bit the day one, yeah. And I'm going to talk moving into the mastery of your vibrational reality. And I'm going to share with everybody a couple of different universal law. Universal law is a mechanism of the mind, the mechanism of the uh, energetics in the universe. Sometimes people call laws of nature, laws of being, but that's embedded in ourselves because we are part of nature, yeah. And I think that navigation of the vibrational reality, which is the initiation of every happening, is what we are here to play and pain, yeah. That is the music that we're playing internally that the outside will reflect. So a couple of universal laws that I feel like it's uh, a key. I already share with everybody that universal law of polarity yesterday, right? The contract thing, good and bad, opposite thing. Uh, there's a, you know, love and hate and darkness and light. Uh, I also talk a little bit about the universal law of relativity. Yeah, universal law of relativity, which is the physical realm is the realm of the relative. So the opposite and something that is not exist. And I think it's a fundamental nature and the destiny for a destiny for all humans to go through the experience of who we are not to be able to remember who we are. Yeah. And then don't, don't take too seriously, everybody. <laughs> don't take too seriously because this is like a little bit, it could be very light. Yeah, it could be very light and it could be very fun and playful. Um, that has been working for me, right? Whatever that works for you, you can kind of take this lightly. Lightly doesn't mean that you're not dedicated, right? But there's a lightness, right? We want to be grounded, but we want to be light. I think that is also the uh, energy and the quality of the spirit, soul. Oh, you're still seeking a ideal career. Oh, why don't you jump into a calling, Nick? Skip career and just jump onto the calling. Okay, so I think it was clear what I said yesterday, yeah? The root cause of everything is the disconnect from the creator. Sometimes we call the loss of contact with the essence, the being. The idea that we forgot who we are, the uh, underlying energy that we are demonstrating the separation from the whole. If we can contemplate on this idea and then constantly reflect, okay, 
I'm thinking these thoughts right now as I am here in front of this tree or in front of this person. Is this thought reflecting the wholeness or separation? Yeah. Every single fear, psychological, psycho-emotional fear comes from the assumption, underlying assumption of separation. I'm going to talk about separation uh, assumption a little bit uh, more in detail. But what I want to make it clear is that, okay, we have this understanding intellectually that, yeah, of course, we are whole, right? If you're into spirituality manifestation, you're entering into this understanding, you know, yeah, I like that idea. I can feel that that is true. But then what's getting the way is that the way that we might have been living might have not been aligned with that underlying assumption. The underlying assumption becomes our energetics in the body the energetics in the body, right? So what we know intellectually using our conscious mind through understanding and the how we feel about things in the body as an energetics are two different things. That's why many people are interested in and into this kind of topic. And there are different kinds of YouTube videos. There's all kinds of books. There are so many people who are addressing this topic from different angles and they go to that learning, but then they're, the way that they're showing up and demonstrating are not congruent with what they're learning. That's called, now by now I call that knowing being gap. There's a gap between what we know and understand and how the body is assuming what life and what self is. What the body, the energetics of the body, your subconscious mind is assuming what life and what you are in, in this world. And that's because of the programming. That's because of the constant repetition that we have been demonstrating based on the assumption of separation. Every single psycho-emotional fear-based emotion and thoughts, judgment, comparison, feeling inferior, guilty, guilt, guilt or envy, or some frustration about something in the outside comes from the fundamental assumption that you are separate from the whole, the creator. That's the single root cause of all the rest of the symptom. Now, when we start repeating the negative thoughts, when we start suppressing our destructive emotion, when we start limiting ourselves with the belief based on the idea of who we are not, and when we continue to suppress that in the outside situation or people around us, we want to kind of meet with them because there's this tendency of wanting to relate with people. Yeah. Our ego and our identity dies when we lose relationship. Our ego and our identity dies when we lose relationship because we can identify ourselves only through the relationship with something else other than ourselves. Yeah. The analogy that I always give is if you imagine you living in an island by yourself, who can you become as an identity just being you? There might be animals, there might be birds, there might be trees. Yeah. So there is an inevitable role that we are playing on this physical realm based on the environment, space, and feel that we are in, right? So that is the tricky point. Like, we are forming an identity through relationship. That's why many people want to, well, this is not for everybody, but there are tendency that people want to make others happy, right? Nobody wants to be seen. I mean, everybody wants to be seen, liked, and accepted, right? Not being accepted, not being acknowledged, not being liked is not being included in the energy of the relationality where you feel and see yourself as somebody in that context relationship that's why you know there is a in 
visible expectation in our surrounding, the most people tend to try hard to meet that expectation. Yeah. And then when that expectation is not congruent with how you would like to show up, how you want to be thinking, all that, all those, you know, negative thoughts or emotion and belief arise from within. And that becomes some symptoms in the body that shows up in some sort of situational symptoms where you have some sort of adversity, all that, right? So every single, like when we say health, we talk about, you know, like bodies, injuries, or illness, right? But I think there is a broader health of how our energy impact, not only our body, you know, we have this category that we call health, but I don't think, sometimes I don't think, you know, because the universe is very impersonal, means that the universe is not choosing, oh, Denise is here, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to oh, pick you, Denise, but I see you on the screen, so uh, Denise is here, so I'm going to give Denise this. Oh, Ethan is here, so I'm going to give Ethan here this. Oh, Kara is here. Oh, I'm going to give Kara this, right? The universe is not ch choosing. You know, universe has this just an impersonal flow, and energetically, it just gives you things that needs based on how much we might be preventing ourselves from expressing that universal energy through us. So when symptoms appear in the body, we call health, wellness, illness. When symptoms appear in the relationship with the loved ones or friends or family, we call this relationship issue. Uh, when symptoms appear in the lack of finance, we call this financial issue. I don't think universe cares about which issue is, right? It just shows up in different things. So it's just a matter of life informing us to pay attention to something that we might be limiting in us that is preventing to express the fullness of who we are, yeah? So that is the fundamental you know, analogy and the way that I learned to look at things to help all of us unstuck. So, let me just kind of go through, and if you have any comments or something that you are experiencing internally as you hear, uh, you know, feel free to type on the chat because that's gonna stimulate other people who are participating. Uh, but let me go back to the three illusions of the mind. Can anyone name what they are? I kind of mentioned yesterday, but then. I also realized that there's another layer of making it a little bit more clear about what I really meant. So I mentioned about one of the, the first illusion is that you identify yourself as a mind, right? What does that really mean? Like when you, like we talk about, or I talk about often, we're spiritual beings, right? Living in the physical body and then gifted with intellect. That is a nice sentence, right? very catchy. Now, but that means that you and I are not the mind, you and I not the body, right? We are beyond that, more than that, whatever you want to frame it, right? But many people are ending up identifying themselves as the mind. Yeah, let me give you an example. If you think negative thoughts, and if you don't like that negative thought, and that negative thought or frustration or some sort of thinking about something creates a destructive emotion inside of you, can you see that as not you? Can you see that as not you, that experience inside? Because you are not the mind. The thoughts that you are thinking and the emotion that you're experiencing 
it's not you it's your mind your thoughts your emotion yeah if you believe that you have gone through some traumatic experience in the past trauma is a you know different kind of trauma right physical psychological but there is a feeling inside that you created based on that situation yeah that feeling in the past was created based on the awareness that you are in. Does that make sense? Let's say if you had that some sort of experience without naming what it was, right? Some situational stuff in the past, let's say five years old. Five years old knew what the five years old knew as far as the awareness. Like when you compare yourself right now, what you know, what you aware, you have experienced a lot of stuff. You, we have made a mistake. We have uh, gained new understanding about stuff. We start looking at life from a completely different perspective. And then we have this certain awareness that we're seeing the world life ourselves that is different from the moment when we were five years old. But the trauma is, you know, usually happens based on some incidents that is perceived to be negative, yeah? And then that feeling gets nested inside. But the whole thing is happening based on the awareness of that time, yeah? And then because there's this thing called memory that we carry along, the implicit memory, yeah? The difference between explicit and implicit memory is that explicit memory is that, okay, I remember my name, Yuki. I remember my birthday. I remember the place that I live. So it's an explicit stuff. Implicit memory is more of the process-oriented situation that enters into our energetic, and you cannot identify too much as a word or category, but the body kinds of remember. A good example is riding bicycle. You are not step-by-step step remembering how to do it, but the body learns it. Yeah. And also, the place that you drive from where you live to somewhere that you go very often, that becomes sort of like an implicit, right? Like it enters hypnotically in our body, and the body cannot remember and you need to navigate your conscious attention to see what exactly it was, right? It's a little vague. It's a different kinds of memory, yeah? Now, but that memory was created based on how you perceive the situation. That perception that the memory was created was based on the awareness back then, yeah? Now, if you are not the mind, that memory and that feeling is not you either. That's what it means. So if we are letting the past trauma memory or something that happened in the past to really dictate who we are, we are actually assuming that we are the mind, but we want to be able to observe it. Yeah. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that it's not going to influence us totally, right? Because the mind and the body and the soul is intertwined. But by observing the mind, you will not be absorbed by it. Yeah. That's the phrase that I often say. So, the first illusion is that many of us tend to identify ourselves as a mind. Many of us tend to identify ourselves as the past, present, memory self. But as Carl Jung put it, you are not what happened to you. You are who you choose to become. So who you can become is something that we can Rebirth every single moment. 
Like right now, it's 9.38 Pacific Standard Time, everybody. A minute later, you can become somebody else. That's what it means, right? But there's an underlying assumption that I have been this way, the belief of how we have been seen gets in the way. But there is a choice in every single moment that we can become a completely different person. And it's easier in my experience to become somebody else when the practice of you as an essence and not being absorbed by the mind is there. Yeah. So why do we identify ourselves as the mind? That is the illusion, the first illusion of the mind, right? Because we stop identifying ourselves as the whole, yeah, as the wholeness. So our separation that I mentioned yesterday leads us to see ourselves as the mind, yeah? The mind is something that we can use as a tool to create the life, to live this 3D playground, but that is not who you are. So that's the, that's the first illusion, right? Yes, Jessica, it is memory. And memory is the faculty of the mind. And the second illusion is something that I mentioned about somebody said something, let's say to you, and you take it personally. Yeah. You take it personally. Or something that shows up in your life is not the way that you want to see and that impact your confidence, whatever. Yeah. Now, I'm more talking about the interaction with others, but when somebody said something and that impacts you, the first thing that we wanna be clear is that most people are speaking from their model of the world, their belief, and they have the story that they created, who they think they are, and what life is about. So when somebody says something based on that story that might not be true, that doesn't need to affect us, right? But the whole sequence of something being told affecting comes from this idea that we think that we're separate from others. So the first illusion that leads to you are the mind is you feeling like you are separate from the whole. And the second illusion that what others tell you impact negatively, taking it personally or feeling something that influencing the worthiness comes from we believing that we are separate from others or others are separate from us. When we start believing that others are separate from us, we start not being able to see other people's story. Yeah, everybody has their story, their false stories that's forming their belief, that is creating the perception, therefore their opinions and ideas about anything. And whatever that they express will come from that place. But that's a energy that they're expressing. But if we ground ourselves into the essence of who we are, that we are connected with the whole and others, that becomes much, much lighter. That becomes, we can hear us, okay, this is, this is the statement that is being made based on this person's awareness, based on the belief and the way that they, the person sees the world. The expression that is based on the belief will not affect us because we are listening to where that voice is coming from. Yeah. 
So can you see how that tied into, again, the separation of our wholeness, right? Now, the third illusion is the past and the future thing, yeah? There's no such a thing as the past and the future, right? It just happened, right? And it will happen, but it's happening all the time, right? It's happening all the time. And when the past happened, it happened when it was present. When the future arrives, we think that it will happen, but it always happens when it becomes the present. So I think when we begin aligning with living from that spiritual dimension, we can only be in the present moment. That doesn't mean that we don't plan. <laughs> that doesn't mean that you're not going to think about, oh, day three tomorrow is nine o'clock. <laughs> but there is a different way of relating with time that frees everything up. Frees everything up. Yeah. And I have come to realize that, you know, connecting and, you know, remembering, regaining back the connection with the whole, and then including all the 7 billion people as a part of the whole, that entering into that wholeness and entering into the present moment, that is all there is, no different two things if that makes sense. So I think the key here is how can we begin becoming that and living that? Because it's easy for us to say, oh, I'm not the mind, I know that. Oh, it's easy to say, oh, the present moment is the only moment exists, I know that, right? Past is past, past happened when it was present, future comes when that becomes present, but how can we become that existence to embrace and be in that moment and to live in that connectivity with the whole is what we want to practice, right? Because the knowing being gap is very uh, wide for a lot of people. And it is not about gathering information. It is not about reading a book. It is not about watching a YouTube video, but it is about internalizing and embodying, and how do we know that it's embody our reaction to life changes, our thinking pattern changes, the way that you feel and experience life will changes, the way that you feel about yourself changes, because the energetics in the body now is shifting, not what you know in your mind, but what you feel in your subconscious level. That is the real transformation that is the transformation of your identity identity is an energetics in your subconscious level that is consist that consists of your thoughts feelings and emotions and beliefs i can have like a 10 hour training <laughs> You know, I'm going to go slow a little bit because I know there's a lot of information and uh, we all need to sort of absorb a little bit. Something that I want to mention, uh, feel free to sort of comment if you have any question, right? Uh, more question out, uh, tomorrow. If you have a, like a bigger question, you can kind of save it for tomorrow. But like a smaller, like a micro question that comes up, uh, you're welcome to uh, use the chat box and I can sort of respond to that. Let's talk a little bit about the universal law of cause and effect. Yeah, we sort of cover a little bit. And it's similar to the universal law of trans, uh, perpetual transmutation of energy. Let's start with that. The universal law of perpetual transmutation of energy is the thoughts that you entertain in your mind, and when you impress that thoughts into your feeling consistently and long enough, that gets birthed into a form in the physical world. Yeah. 
So thought turning into the feeling, and the feeling is what I have been sharing as an energetics of the body. The energetics of the body is the point of attraction, yeah? Point of attraction to mold the physical occurrence, synchronicity, a situation, accident that is never an accident, meeting somebody, all that in the physical realm. Yeah. Did I say transformation of the energetics of thought and feeling? Uh, transformation of identity is the change in the energetics of the body. Uh, yes. So what is that? What is that characteristics of the energetics of the body? AKA feeling, AKA subconscious mind. Yeah. I'm just choosing to use the term energetics of the body, right? Because you can feel the energy in the body. Like right now, as you watch and listen to myself, there is a sense of self in your body vibrating as an energetics. How you feel about you in the world, how you see the world, how you see life, and who you are in this physical world. Yeah. All those information of the perception and the beliefs about things lives inside of your body as an energetics. That is what we are wanting to shift to become somebody else. Who you and um, somebody else is not about changing who you are but changing who you're becoming constantly. Who you are will never change. It's changeless and it's absolute. And there's nothing that is lacking on the spiritual plane. You know, we talk about the perfectionist and, you know, uh, you know, we are perfect. We are not perfect. <laughs> yeah, all that. We are perfect. Yeah. How do you feel? What comes up in your mind when I say that you are perfect? I am perfect. The world is perfect. Is there but coming? But this and this and this and this. And the list goes like 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50, right? That is a concept and an idea that you hold what's not perfect. Does that make sense? That if, if, you know, I'm assuming, yeah, you are perfect. And then if you're thinking that, hmm, I don't know about that. There's this that needs to be improved. There's this that needs to be shifted. Yeah. That is an idea that you have a concept that you have. But the perfection is not a conception. Perfection is the essence that there is. So let's say if you see a tree, right? Tree doesn't judge. Tree doesn't have an opinion about your makeup. Tree doesn't have an opinion about how you're dressing, right? Tree just is. And imagine two different trees, left and right. One is looks vibrant and it's tall and it's green and it's solid. The other one feels like the, the, the leaves are falling apart. Yeah, a little bit, falling off a little bit. They're both perfect. But what makes not perfect is our opinion about it. Yeah. So I think there is different ways that we use what perfection is, right? The perfection from the conceptual perspective or perfect, uh, perfection from the absolute what is perfect uh, perspective. And what we want to do is to begin bridging the gap between the two. Yeah. I'm not saying improvement is bad. I'm not saying innovation is bad. I'm all about that. But I think there's a place that we can march the two. And we want to navigate our mind to be able to focus on the expansion, to see the perfection, and to focus on expanding the 
that you know you should that, that fill in the cap that that cup right we, we we don't focus on the empty part of it but we want to focus on the full part of it and it just becomes fuller and fuller so let me address a little bit about speaking of the universal law of perpetual transmutation of energy yeah what does it mean to embody that per perpetual transmutation of energy and the universal law of cause and effect and then of course there's a law of vibration that we are vibrational energetic spin and the law of attraction is that that vibration that we emanate is the point of attraction to magnify the occurrence situation and circumstance and that happens through our thinking into our feeling and an action is an energetics right when we take a certain action we're moving energy but there is an intention in that action intention is directing energy so what does it mean to really master because we're talking about mastery of your vibrational reality is to understand that your thoughts creates some imagery in your mind and that inevitably will have a corresponding feeling that feeling of the thoughts is what shapes the energetics in the body and the energetics of the body becomes the point of attraction to birth and create things in the physical realm yeah now then we want to come from the end in mind and we want to really become aware of whether we're constantly operating from the place of cause instead of letting our inside our thoughts and feeling to become the effect of the outside yeah so when you think thoughts let's say if you thought a moment of negative thinking or some fear creeps in and you start doubting about something that is a thought yeah when you doubt about something there is the feeling that is contracting in the body I don't know what your feeling is in your body when you doubt, but you have some sort of sense of what it is. And that creates some energy, right? So do we want to manifest and letting the entire forces of the universe respond to that doubt energy? That's what we want to be, how we want to be thinking. Yeah. And then what I, the, the, the comment and response that I often get is, but this is, but this is happening in the outside. How can I not think and feel this way? Right? And 100% of the time, everybody, <clears throat> thinking, worry, and doubt because of the external situation will never help the external situation. Yeah, 100% of the time. Tell me if there's a, a version that would help, right? Thinking destructive emotions, the frustration or worry or doubt because something is showing up in our life and the external situation causing our insight to create an effect of that never help the outside situation that we want to change. Because change... We don't feel good trying to change from the place of fear. Yeah. And well, you know, we kind of initiate some motivation and we might be able to change something, but we're not living the moment with joy. We're not living the moment with ease, right? So how can we stay in that place is to begin looking at your mind as a tool instead of you identifying yourself as a mind so you can be outside of that and then begin switching the gear to initiate what you want inside first right so that is living and applying and demonstrating the universal law of perpetual transmutation of energy
Yeah, you can see anxiety in the body and noticing. I'm not saying to not feel anything that is negative. The body is going to feel something, right, in response to what's happening because the instinct is the fastest to kick in. And then the instincts deliver that information to emotion and then you, you feel some emotion. But then what we want to notice is to understand the mechanism of the universe, then you start practicing noticing and you start practicing noticing. But the anxiety or worry or doubt often is a representation or reflection of the past experience and what worked, what didn't work, all that, right? So, and then often for most of us, the past present self is not, it's not too much based on the wholeness, right? We are now remembering to get back and reconnect to wholeness. And the more we can observe that anxiety and then create space, the key is everybody to not to try to do anything to that anxiety, but to be with it, to be with it. We don't want to try to change that anxiety when we are observing. Because when we try to change that anxiety, it will fight against you. But internally, you practice observing. And you can move the body and do different things to alleviate that sensation. You might have your resume, regimen. But internally, when we practice, it is to practice observing. And then when you observe without resisting, it will when the time you know a little bit of time it might take a little bit of time it will start dissipating a little bit and then when it dissipate you now have a space mentally and emotionally to shift into reconnecting with who we who you are we want to bring your awareness and attention back to that because whatever the anxiety that arises as i said is a moment of disconnect from the whole moment of disconnect from the whole. So that's the perpetual transmutation of energy. Yeah. Uh, let me speak a little bit about the universal law of assumption, which is probably this is my number two favorite universal law. Yeah. Number one is low polarity. People know that that's my favorite. But universal law of assumption is so good. Assumption is an expectation, yeah? What are we assuming to be true? What are we assuming to be true? So we have some belief about something. We have some belief about ourselves. We have some belief around life. There is an assumption, underlying assumption, that because this is how it has been, Tomorrow is going to be something similar. Yeah. Tomorrow is going to be something similar. So assumption is what you're expecting based on how you see things, the values and beliefs and the worldview that you have. So and in these universal laws, everybody, is the mechanism of the universe and it's part of the mind, so it is a tool. It is a tool to create. And these universal laws are mental laws. The physical law is law of gravity, yeah? You can have fun with gravity, or you can feel torture by gravity, right? Does that make sense? Like gravity can work against you if you are not having a healthy relationship to it. That's not sense. I, I like to bring up the law of gravity because it's kind of easy for people to understand. And gravity is working all the time. See how gravity is impersonal? Gravity doesn't choose, oh, let's give Denise a little extra, or let's give Akara a little extra, right? It's just working the way that it works. 
right? So I don't know if you're doing yoga or push up, like if you if you're inclined, it works based on that angle, right? But it's embedded. So the mental laws are also impersonal and embedded. So we can use the law of assumption, just like we sort of play with gravity, you know, engaging in exercise or dancing or not sure, squat, or I don't know if you do crossfit, right? And how do we play with it? Like we can choose to assume whatever we want to assume. We can choose to assume that we are spiritual creators. We can choose to assume that I am very good at living in the moment. We can choose to assume that I am enlightened and the past memory has no room to dictate my thinking. We can create assumption and accept expectation choosing what we want to believe. And we can assume that the law of assumption works for us or not work for us. So you can see belief and assumption goes hand in hand, right? You can believe that every belief that you have becomes true in your life. Or you can believe that that is a BS, which is another belief system. So we cannot go around it. Right? So anything that we choose to believe, it becomes true in your life. If you choose to believe and assume that, that becomes the energy in which we can create a fuel to manifest and form something in the physical. Let me talk a little bit about the energetics in the body because by now probably everyone sort of feel like that is the key, which is uh, correct everybody, that is the key. To be able to shift and change and transform the quality of the energetics in the body is the key to transformation. That means that it is the key to become whoever you want to become, yeah? And whoever you want to become probably is the version of you that allows you to express your desire fully to create the life that you want to be living, yeah? Now, I think the tricky point is to really begin understanding and owning the characteristics of the subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind does not know the difference between what you see, hear, smell, taste, touch in the physical world and what you imagine the see, hear, smell, taste, touch in your mind's eyes. Let me say that two more times. Your subconscious mind and the energetics of the body feeling is not able to differentiate what you're seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching in that 3D physical world and what you create in that five sensory experience using your imagination. So what that really means is that we want to be able to capture what we are imagining, what we are seeing in our mind's eyes, including the thoughts, including the internal narrative, including the voice in the head, including the very whispering one in the back of the head that is going on. We want to be able to capture all of those because most of the time, if we are living in the bubble of the mind, your identity, yeah, that inner talk 
that is very whispering that's happening in the back of the hair became a part of who you think you are. So if you live in that inside of who you think you are, that you have been playing for the last five, 10 more years, sometimes you cannot hear it because you're inside of it. So I think the key is, of course, awareness, right? And the key awareness is to be able to observe our inner body's experience, including the voice in the head and the emotions, and noticing the words that we speak inside, outside, because every single word that we speak internally to ourselves and to somebody else is a direct reflection of the belief that we are holding, right? There's no any separation between what we tell ourselves and what we be, believe to be true. The inner dialogue reflects belief. And not to scare everybody, everything that you type on this chat reflects your belief. So I can see your belief based on what you say. Yeah. Which is a good thing because we can notice and observe, right? I can see and hear in my language, watching my maybe a year ago video, where my belief was back then. And constantly shifting, shifting, shifting. It's an, you know, continuous unfoldment of peeling off the belief that you notice that might be limiting to enter deeper into the potential. So, one of the keys is to realize that, okay, to change the energetics, if the energetics doesn't recognize the outside and the imagined world, it means that in order to change the energetics, the outside doesn't really need to change. Does that make sense? Let me say that again. If your energetics of the body changing, that is the key to create a different outside situation and your energetics doesn't recognize the difference between the outside world and your imagined world, it means that your energetics can be changed without the 3D world changing. So you go inside to form that imagination of the life that you would like to be living as if it's happening right now because the body cannot tell past or future either. The soul and the body only lives in the now. The mind is the only creature that travels creating conception, past and future. So when you bring that imagery of your desire fulfilled, the life that you feel so expansive and how you will be becoming in that life, your energetics can change because it doesn't really matter whether it's happening in the outside or it's happening in the imagined world. And then here's the key, everybody. When we start practicing doing that, you will come across different situations in the outside that doesn't correspond that imagery. You will see what you don't want because what you want is something that you don't currently have in the 3D world. Otherwise, you wouldn't want it. So it's inevitable to face contrast, right? What you're desiring, you're desiring because it's not in the physical world yet. You wouldn't desire it if it's already there. So it's inevitable to see in the 3D world what you don't want. Then the practice is to not to let that affect our internal energy, which is the reason that in the divine blueprint yesterday, I mentioned about one of the key is to form a healthy relationship with contrast. 
right? In the 3D world, there's things that you don't want. That's why you have a different desire of wanting how to relate with what's not desiring in your surrounding is to believe that the desire that we are seeking is already being created in the spiritual plane because that's the only reason that you desire it. You wouldn't desire anything that's already not being created in the spiritual. There's nothing that is lacking in the 5D spiritual plane. What we're playing in this physical world is using the psycho-emotional tool to move that, let's just call energy, into the physical form. So how can we live our life from that perspective? And the two contrasts that arise is your past, present self of the different things around lack of confidence or not good enoughness or the, the experience that you felt not satisfying, empowering the past, reoccurring, reflecting back, right? That is one contrast internally that would arise. The other one is the outside feedback or something that you're not liking. So relating with our own memory mind in a healthier way, relating with the outside situation in a healthier way, healthier way, I'm using that term, but more in a spiritual way, is the key to stay consistent in the mode of creation. Because when we allow the past, present self or outside to impact how we feel inside, we're not creating, but we're being created. We're not initiating that creation. We are being created by something outside. Whenever we fear, everybody, fear is a fundamental energy that represent the absence of the connectivity with the whole. But the moment we fear, fear is letting the power be present in something outside of you. So we are temporarily losing the power inside. That's why we fear something. We are giving too much power to something outside by losing the connectivity with your own power because we temporarily disconnect from the whole. Wholeness is powerful. Wholeness is perfect. Wholeness is infinite and abundant. Wholeness is just love and freedom. And nothing else can be more powerful than that. So whenever we have this moment of fear, we are giving power to something outside of you. That's why you go to that fear. And that fear, everybody, is life informing us to gain and remember that power back. That's why we don't enjoy it. Anything that you're not enjoying, this life informing us to reconnect. Because we are temporarily moving into this space of who we are not. We are not fear, but love, yeah? I want to pause a bit and let people kind of feel into it. Does anybody have any comments? Anything that's coming up? I feel like I don't be paying attention to that. I don't think I believe that I'm good at presenting and paying attention to the chat at the same time. Currently, no. Anger. Stephanie is talking about anger. Anger is interesting. Why do we get angry? Nice to have you, Isa. 
Why do we get hungry? Why do we get frustrated? Do we get frustrated? Yeah, fear is definitely moving away from love. Sure, what that means. Oh, let's talk about the reflection. Let's talk about the reflection. I almost forgot to talk about the reflection. Okay, day two. Where is the reflection? This one, this one. Let me know if you see the workbook. Yeah, uh, I think I cover everything. Reflection. Okay, what is the desire? Desire is what where we wanna begin, everybody, yeah? What do you desire to create? This is not the same as what do you think others desire, right? What do you desire? Oh, is somebody joining right now? We're gonna finish. It. We're gonna be finishing up soon. What is the external life? Number two. What is the external life that mirrors that inside? I mean, you can start with either, right? What is the life that you wanna be living? What do you see? in the physical world when you when your desire is being fulfilled yeah number three what is the decision you're making to sustain this internal state this is important though everybody because you know we come to this kind of training and then we have this sort of you know facebook interaction and email interaction and then you kind of reflect a little bit um and then we get drifted. We have this habit of drifting to get drifted out of paying attention to the inside. And we go back to this habitual default state. So if you feel like this is important to you to uh, address and work through it, which I hope you think that it's important because I think everything else in your life is gonna shift by connecting with the whole nest part of it. And I don't think that there's anything else that's more valuable. Um, I would highly encourage to sort of keep moving and do something with us. Uh, on day one is that I mentioned that we're school, right? So we have different programs, yeah. Um, and I think I mentioned uh, with Julian and Emily, uh, usually, if you really want to transform and take your life to, let's just call it next level to become a creator, I think that it would take a year to two. Yeah. And you can start with a smaller, shorter one. Uh, we're going to be studying next week, April 6th. Uh, we do a study group. And study group is about becoming, right? Uh, this is sort of the introduction of that. And in the study group, I tend to use a book. Uh, we're going to be using The Voice of Knowledge by Don Miguel Ruiz. And it's not about talking about the book. Yeah, uh, I'll be offering some lessons and different concepts, which I'm going to go over tomorrow more. Um, and it is about being in the energy of these ideas and concepts and then taking that to the outside of your day-to-day -day life so you can constantly stay connected with observing and paying attention. Um, unless you are currently already in that sort of energy that you're surrounded by that, um, often what happens is that because you, we have this thing called extended identity, right? You have your home, you have your people that you're surrounded by who might not be in this mode of being the creator, you get sucked back into the default past present version. So this is not a learning how to um, 
fix a computer class, or this is now, uh, you know, gaining skill set class. This is about learning how to navigate and shift the energetics of the body. Yeah. And it takes a little bit longer. Now, you're welcome to choose to believe that you can do that, boom, in an instance. But until you form the belief that you can do in an instance, I found that many people takes a little bit time. So the study group that's studying next, what is it? April 6th, Thursday is 12 weeks. Yeah, um, that is an option. Uh, if you really feel called to dive fully into that, uh, we also have this six month uh, path called self divine self-realization. That is the best thing that you could do. Uh, if you join us to that, you will also get access to that study group. And if you feel called to really own this and also help others, what we really do is to help people become a sole purpose coach. Yeah, we offer that uh, certificate of completion so you can actually begin becoming that a guide to help others. So that's more of the IEAR stuff. So uh, you can get in touch with us. Uh, you will see my email going out to um, sort of offer, uh, you know, chat a little bit so I can see, you know, learn where you're at and what exactly you're looking for. Uh, we also have divine success guide, you know, in our team where uh, some of the team might reach out to you via Facebook or uh, via email. And uh, this is an opportunity for us to learn where you are and for you to learn what exactly we can help you to do things to really, really transform, right? So uh, if this is something that you feel like it's important, uh, I will highly suggest to dive into something because then it will give you that sustaining being consistency. Uh, environment and community group and the energy that you are surrounded by is very important because uh, we are, you know, the, the community and the people that we are surrounded by is the seed of forming an identity. We form identity through relationship, yeah? So then identify number four, who you are becoming who you are becoming. Like when I ask this question, many people answer, you know, the artist. Yeah, I like the term artist, right? Uh, Don Miguel always talks about we are the artist of the spirit. Yeah, we are the vessel that the infinite express through. And we have different things as the vehicle, but who are you becoming that you might not be um, just yet is what we want to uh, contemplate. And then, to not to leave this as a mental exercise, but to move that into the physical movement. What is one action you can take today, not tomorrow, today, that reflects this new becoming? Yeah, let's say if your desire lifestyle is very huge, right? You dream big. We encourage people to dream big, right? There's no such a thing as unrealistic goal, everybody, by the way. Yeah, unrealistic goal is another belief. If this universal law, mental law, works exactly like the law of gravity, that belief and the assumption in which we operate dictate the outcome. So if you call something unrealistic, it becomes so because that is the energy that you're relating to something. Yeah. And many people talk about miracle or magic, yeah? I think we're all magicians, right? I think we're all miracle creators, yeah? How can we make that miracle, magic, quantum leap as our next normality is what we wanna be practicing mentally and emotionally. So what is one action you can take today that reflects this becoming is what we wanna practice. Does anybody have any question quickly about this reflection? Uh, I will suggest if you have some time that you can set aside, I would suggest to do this today. Yeah, 
And if you do, if you did the reflection from yesterday and today, we can take that to tomorrow. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, write down and bring all those questions to tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, mainly it's going to be answering Q&A. And I'm going to be talking about the day three, becoming the divine essence, and the whole process of the embodiment of the divine blueprint, the vibrational reality, and really becoming that. Yep. Building a healthy relationship with contrast, it is, Jenny. Okay, that is it, everybody. Thank you very much for your presence and participation. And I will see you tomorrow or next time. Uh, I'm going to post something in a Facebook group and you can answer it. I would love to hear that takeaway. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody.